present. Okay. Um, Yvonne Terrible. One sec. Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, great. I can hear you. Thank you. No <laughs> Talbot. Yeah, I'm here. No one we can hear you. Uh, Dale Cook. I'm here. Great, thank you. Defensky. Steve Georgie. I'm here. Thank you. We can hear you. Jason Hollanday. I'm here, but I can only stay at Atlantic 10, 10, 15. Okay, great. Thank you. Mark Johnson. Yep, I'm here. Thank you, Mark. Bernadine Joslin. Present. Thank you, Bernadine. Brian Crambier. Here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Brian. Micah Mayers. Micah, I won't forget you this time. Micah. Uh, Teresa Sunday, I don't think she's on. She was going to be late. Jim Wycombe. Good morning. Good morning, Jim. We can hear you. Paul Wirt. Tyler. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. And Dave Wolf, I heard he's not going to be joining. Just double checking. All right, and has Steve Fensky joined yet? Okay, there's someone waiting in the lobby. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, I'll send Steve an email, but I don't think he's going to. So every, everyone is here except Steve, and then we know Jesus is going to be late, and Dave Wolf, I believe, was not going to join. Okay. Thank you, Diane, and good morning, everyone. So I appreciate everybody making again time to be able to meet again on this. I think we're kind of getting here to the to the finish line, and um, a lot of work has gone into it up to this point, and, and look forward to a, a, a good, robust conversation today. Um, before we get started in kind of the document and, and getting feedback and comments from the folks uh, to review that piece of it, uh, the first thing we need to do is, that, is uh, approve the minutes from our last two meetings. Um, we didn't get a chance to do that, so uh, Diane sent out a copy of the minutes. Uh, hopefully we had a chance to take a look at it. Uh, at this point in time, if anyone has any comments or questions, um, uh, please, state that at the, please state that now. Hearing any comments, questions? I don't see any hands raised. Uh, so, unless there's any disagreements, we'll just assume the minutes are approved. All right. Any, any pushback on that? Great. So, minutes are approved. All right. So, really, all we have today, I mean, not all we have, this is going to be probably pretty busy, but uh, there's really one topic it's just to review the draft document. Um, Diane sent out a link to that yesterday. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to look at it and you have some comments ready. Um, what we'll do today is sort of slowly walk through the documents and give folks the ability to make some comments. But along the way, there are some things that are open items that we probably need to discuss as a group as well. So I will point those out as we go through it. Um, a couple of notes also about the document as we get into it. Um, formatting wise, you know, we're still in the process of formatting and kind of finalizing it. So you might see different fonts uh, in there. You might see different colors for the, for the text. Uh, as the writers came together, it was just a way for them to, to get organized uh, about what uh, the, the different pieces. So uh, all that will get cleaned up, all the figures and the annotations and the references and all that will, will still needs to get cleaned up a little bit. But we, we figure we want to get the meat of the document uh, completed and discussed today and then we would work on those on those second pieces. Uh, another part in the document that's not quite finished yet is the executive summary. Again, it was uh, I started on the executive summary but without having sort of final pieces of the different parts, um, it was hard to come up with one executive summary. So uh, once we get through today and um, we kind of uh, get alignment on most pieces there, uh, we will draft the executive summary and that should be just be a one page, not very long. Uh, the document itself is at the moment, it, with appendix and everything, it's about 37 pages. Uh, it's probably like less than 30 pages worth of a read, so it's not terrible. Uh, so I think that to be long as well. 
So those are some of kind of the initial pieces. And then the last thing I'll say is really want to thank the writers. Uh, a lot of work that went into it between last week and this week. Um, we went into it kind of bringing three different documents that had overlapping pieces, but also pieces that were completely uh, distinct from one another. Try to merge that all together, uh, you know, just to kind of give you a little bit of a flavor of the, how, how it went. We started out with the document was laid out almost by the three subgroups. But as we went through the topics and discussed, you know, went back and tried to combine things together, it actually morphed a little bit differently. And the document is more laid out along, uh, along the lines of the recommendations. Um, and that's kind of where we, where we land at the end of the day. So you can imagine a lot of the discussing that. And then, you know, each writer took a different section, different pieces of the, uh, of the document and then worked on it. So they had to merge some of the language together. So a lot, a lot of work went in. So thank you to uh, 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 Steve Fensky for taking a portion of this, Cassie Lavelle and Anne Treacy. Um, they all did a, a phenomenal job to get us to this spot. So I uh, really want to give kudos to them. Um, so that's all I have. Um, any other questions or comments before we dive into the document? OK. Um, as far as sharing, um, Cassie, would you mind sharing the document? I would like to keep track of who's raising their hand and all that. If I share, I, can, I won't be able to see that. Um, we could do that, then we could quickly, I mean, slowly walk through the document. Yep, just give me a couple minutes to access it, unless Diane has it open by chance. No, I'm going to take your time. I think you can okay. I can do it, but then I can't keep track of who's in the meeting. <laughs> I, I know. That's one, uh, that's maybe a feedback we give to Microsoft. I've run into this several times now where if you are the person presenting, you can, cannot keep track of what's happening with, uh, with the audience. No hands raised, the comments, the chat, it just becomes really, really messy. So, Kathy, do you want to do it or should I? Not Kathy. Sorry, I'm working on it. Okay. Okay. Um, as Cass is pulling that up, um, any 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 initial comments that anybody from the task force want to make? Not on the specifics of the document. We'll, we'll get to that here in a second. Um, just any high level comments anyone wants to make? You can raise the hell. And as far as the, the other piece I mentioned is uh, just for. Uh, uh, Kind of logistics wise in the meeting right Just have a comment i think we've been doing this very well although in, in other meetings i run into trouble where people speak over each other just raise your hand and that is one thing team does well is they it does actually keep it in track of who raised their hand first so i i will make sure that i look at the hand call on you make comment uh, and then we can move on to the other one so we'll follow that from a from procedural standpoint so with that in mind in any hand this moment any 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 high level comments Has started to share. Was everybody able to access the document? Start there, maybe. See, Island says yes. I'll say is uh, I'm not going to uh, we're not going to make edits on the fly here uh, that would get really messy so what we'll do is I uh, we'll keep track of all the comments and updates and then I'll write them down and then we'll go back and work with the writers to be able to uh, edit those sections uh, and make those adjustments accordingly um, okay so Cassie's got the, the document up. Uh, a couple of things she went through. I mean, the, the initial documents, and Cassie, you don't have to go back up. Um, you know, went through, there's a, a letter that kind of I just put together, sort of thanking this group and giving the, the reader, whoever that might be, a little bit of an overview of what we did throughout the year. Um, then there's like the executive summary section, as I talked about earlier, which that needs to be completed. So that's one of going to be the, one of the last pending items. 
And then from a recommendation standpoint, um, here are the four recommendations. Um, now, before we get through these, what I would say is maybe this is the last thing we want to come to. So we may just go into the into the document first, and then we'll come back to these because the, the details of each one of these is are included in the document. Uh, but one quick comment here: uh, there were some recommendations, or there were some uh, decisions around uh, speed goals and mapping, which are discussed further into the document. But there wasn't a specific recommendation around that. So as the as the writers looked at it, we decided well, there's not actually a recommendation there. So it didn't come up here. So there's actually six pieces to this, like almost six sections of the document, but really only four recommendations came to the top. Again, not to go through these right now, but we'll, we'll come back at the very end just to, just to kind of recap. Um, so going through the document, the first section, um, Steve was really the, uh, took the, the authorship from this one. I really want to thank him for effort there. So we started out with just an initial introduction about uh, the, the kind of, um, broadband capabilities, and then the first piece that got into the border-to-border uh, -to -border broadband uh, development grant. Uh, and obviously, the I won't go through the details here, but the overall recommendations were the, was the, to make a, a, um, an investment of $120 million for the biennium, so $60 million per year. Uh, there was a little bit of the calculation of how we got to the remaining $150 million there, and um, and obviously the, the, the 120 was you know, trying to close that gap to make sure that you know, we got to everyone who's unserved within Minnesota and, and make sure we hit the goals uh, for, the, for the state. So those I would just say at a high level, hopefully you had a chance to kind of read through this. And so I would, um, for this initial section on the border to border grant program, any questions, comments, concerns from the group? Also one piece, as everybody kind of gets their thoughts together, uh, the, there's pieces here that are highlighted. Obviously, in addition to the, uh, the $120 million, one of the things that was introduced here is that you can read it there and the, highlighted in yellow. All future expenditures um, must be on service that meets or exceeds the 2026 goals of 100, 100 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload. So I think that was also discussions we had last time, and hopefully that's in line with what everyone was thinking here. Wow, oh, it's an easy group this morning. We're going to move on. Oh, Steve Georgie. I'm just a uh, kind of quick thought here. Would, would it make sense? to add another column um, for each of those years on household served by those uh, investments. Mm. It's referred to, I think, earlier in the document, but, you know, yep. just a thought. It's good, good call, good call, actually. And the reason I say that, Teddy, and to the group is when you look at the 157,000 unserved households, it kind of gives you an idea how, how big the challenge is. Yeah. When you see how many in a, in a year you actually... You can actually get control of so. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a great call, Steve. We'll, we'll make sure to add that. Uh, Bernadine. Thanks, Teddy. Good morning, everybody. So I wanted to just state again my concern about referencing the CAF2 funding and the formula. I don't think we should count it because it doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, those investments didn't really necessarily advance us towards our speed goals. And the RDOF funding in there, too. Um, I, I would um, suggest that we uh, not include those in the formula. I'll just run through my, I have a couple more comments in this section. Um, this under the, I'm looking at the chart here, it says, you know, that estimated cost to achieve chart and there's a couple bullets under there. Um, that first bullet 
it talks about uh, it's caused inconsistencies years to year. So we're trying to make the case here about why it should be in the base budget. Why uh, we need it in the base budget, and that is that the lack of certainty year to year creates barriers for participation by communities and it's a disincentive to do the work required to get ready to receive the investment. So I think the problem is not so much that the levels of funding is inconsistent, as we say here, but that the lack of certainty is a, a barrier to um, people making the investment to participate in the program. So I'd recommend that that first bullet uh, take into account that it's not just inconsistencies, but the, the implications of that on, on planning and participation in the program. Teddy, if it's okay, I'll just, I just have one more comment on this section. Um, the second bullet talks about uh, the interest in the broadband grant program, the so continued um, interest in the program. I think we can state that much more strongly here. This is an opportunity to be more emphatic and say that there's continued need for the program as evidenced by the growing pipeline of applications. Um, I think that would strengthen our case. I'll stop. Uh, and we're just on this. We're not. We haven't gone to mapping and progress yet, right, Katie? We're just. So that's what I've got on this section. Things. Yeah. Yeah. We're still. We're still in this first part. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, a couple of more comments, Brian. Thanks, Teddy. Uh, I would. Uh, I would agree with Bernadine. I think uh, Angie and Diane did a nice job in listing the uh, the past applicants. Uh, to show that there's people willing to uh, to do the project, so uh, maybe we could highlight that a little stronger. Uh, our committee did talk a little bit about RDOF, and I do like the language. I think when you go back into the text, you will see uh, a little bit of a, a discussion regarding the uncertainty of, of some of the awards, and I think they did a nice job of, uh, of trying to address that. I think Paul will talk a little bit more, uh, also another member of our committee, but I think the challenge that we had, Bernadine, is that how do we not include it when it's out there and it's visible uh, for legislators to look at this and say, hey, you, your, your graph is flawed because you didn't even take into consideration of RDOF. So we did a percentage of that is, is kind of how we looked at it and uh, where it's at. But I would welcome other comments. I think Paul also has his hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I, I really think, you know, we're, we're the broadband task force, and to not include uh, <clears throat> discussion on two of the biggest broadband policies, whether we agree with them or not, as part of the document would be irresponsible. We're not drawing a conclusion on RDOF. I think it, I think it strengthens our case, talking to Minnesota legislators, there's you know, this, it's a 10-year plan, the RDOF. There's no guarantee of funding. Um, you know, I think they need to know what the landscape looks like. And I think for us to not have RDOF as, and, you know, CAF 2 is coming to a close, there was, there's a narrative on that. We included CAF discussions in other reports. Um, fast forward to next year, uh, you know, and we're getting this report. Would we not mention what the Biden administration is going to allocate for broadband? So I, I think they need to be included. It's all part and parcel of the broadband policy discussion for Minnesota legislators. Thanks, Paul. Mark? Um, I, I would, you know, and I, I, in, in the discussion of CAF and, and RDOF, I think, you know, RDOF, I would see as something, yes, we have to include because the anticipation is that it would meet the 25-3-2022 goal for sure because of the requirements of the program. I think we have to talk about CAF because it was a program that existed, but I would tend to agree on the CAF piece that I don't know that the funding for CAF is going to help us achieve the broadband, the goal, the speed goal because that's not a requirement of the program. Uh, the program doesn't require speeds at that level. So I'm just throwing that out for thought. Okay. The cap piece is very small, right? Isn't that the two million or something like that in there, right? It is very small. Yes. Yeah. So whether we include those or not, I mean, I think we get to the same conclusion that we still need 
dollars allocated to this space. Um, so Bernadine, do you have a big issue if we kept it in there? I mean, does, does it? I don't know that it changes the case at all. Well, okay. thank you, Teddy. Maybe the um, opportunity would be to footnote this. I mean, I think Mark's point is spot on. It's not that we're ignoring it. It did happen. I think the chart here is showing is calculating investments needed to achieve our goals. And the point is that those investments didn't necessarily advance towards our state goals. And so maybe a footnote, dropping a footnote in about the impact. And we're gonna, we'll have a chance to talk about the CAF too later in the discussion too, because it comes up in more detail later. But that's my concern is, yes, we need to recognize, but I, I don't wanna misserve our legislature by um, perpetuating in a false impression that those uh, CAF2 investments necessarily advanced us towards our goals. That's the concern. Brian, you had another comment? I was just going to say that I like Bernadine's suggestion. Uh, I think uh, we could even reference that to some of the uh, the text that we have later in the document on RDOF. So I, I think that's a, that's a good idea. Okay. So with that, um, Bernadine, if you don't mind, uh, the footnote as well as the two um, modifications you wanted to make to the first and second bullet there, uh, could you make some of those adjustments and send them to Steve Fensky? You bet. And, and then he will incorporate it into the document and obviously it'll be available for everyone to, to review. Awesome. Okay, any other questions, comments on the first section on the grant program? All right, take that as a celebration moment. We got through one. <laughs> Next section on mapping and progress towards speed goals. Um, so uh, again, um, we spent quite a bit of time on this one too, merged different components of different areas. Um, one of the things that, that was in here was that, you know, obviously not making any changes towards the mapping at the moment, because we still have the contract uh, that goes through, the contract's not up for renewal quite yet uh, with Connected Nation. So uh, again, the report is for 2020, right? This is certainly something we will come back and revisit next year, and maybe we'll have some, uh, not maybe, most likely we will have some recommendations in this area, but at this moment, it was, the idea was, you know, let's keep the uh, mapping as is, uh, and there's some additional discussions about the maps, et cetera, and then we took some of the maps, um, you know, not to dilute the document, so it was for those who were reading it, to quickly get through it, and put some of those charts into the appendix, as you can see there, uh, and there's also some, some tables around progress and things like that. So um, hopefully you had a chance to read this. And at this moment, I will, uh, anybody has any questions or comments, uh, please put uh, your hand up in, the, in Teams. Bernadine? Steady. Um, I'm just trying to, I think from a reader's perspective, it'd be helpful to say a little bit more about um, the existing situation here. This, this paragraph was confusing. We say it recommends no action on mapping changes. To recommend no action on mapping changes is, is I wasn't quite sure what we were trying to say there. I think the point is that we recommend no changes in how the state currently maps our broadband access. And maybe something in here about that we have a contract with Connected Nations, who they are, and that and it says here, you know, that their um, contract comes up for uh, a renewal um, next year, it'll be examined then. But I just thought that the that whole presentation could be um, clarified for the reader. My more substantive point is the third paragraph, Minnesota has progressed towards the 22 speed goal. That, that, um, my concern here is that this paragraph gives the impression that um, it's an automatic you know, ramp up and that if you meet 20, uh, 25 three, you can get from 25 three to 100 by 20. That's not always the case. There's that, um, that it's not a, you know, depending on the technology. And so, um, I, I'm concerned that this implies that progress towards 2022 goal implies progress towards 2026. 
And there are some, some cases of Becker County and Carleton County, you can look at the rankings and stuff that ones that do well by 2025 then suffer on the next rank. And, and so I, I just, that's a concern that I have. I don't want uh, to, to misrepresent that achievement of 25-3 means that we're advancing towards 100 by 20 because it, depending on the deployment, as the task force understands, that's not always the case. So that's my concern about this this whole paragraph that it implies this you know this inevitable march from from 25-3 to 100 by 20, and that's not the way it works. And if people would like some more examples, I could share. There's a couple examples, like I said, Becker and Carleton County are two we could call out in particular about how they did, you know, this year and last year in the mm. in their uh, state rankings by county. Yeah. So um, one comment on the on the county piece. So, so in the appendix, there's all the examples, right? That that Bernadine, and your team, uh, your subgroup kind of came up with, right? Um, and I meant to, I failed to mention this earlier. Um, we put in the appendix for the moment. But as the document gets finalized, we will take pieces of those examples and put them throughout different parts of the document to be able to illustrate and bring to life some of the points we're making. So um, if there's one that you think should be actually here would be representative, that'd be good. So unless others have comments, what I'd ask you, Bernadine, here is also uh, both on the initial opening paragraph, um, if you, if you want to make me tweak the language there, and then also this other piece to clarify it, um, you could send those adjustments to Cassie in this case, um, and then we can make sure we incorporate that into the document. Would that work? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Steve Georgie? If you just look at the second sentence in the Bullet number two doesn't read right. If only serve one, if only serve one location in the census block is served. So. Uh, in this is it in the second paragraph or. No, in, in on page ten, on the sub on the bullet number two. At the bottom of the page. Okay. The second sentence. It's talking about the FCC mapping, and then the second sentence just doesn't. Does, does it read? Uh, okay. Let's make sure to correct that. comments or hands up so we'll move on to the speed call reassessment um, so that is uh, I believe like middle of page 14 or page 14 um, so a couple of things here so we had lots of discussions on this one so uh, again uh, think of this as this is a 2020 report um, we most likely will have a 2021 report at, at a, you know most well at least an, an update to this document in 2021 so at the moment, I know we had lots of discussions about speed goals and, and all those kind of things. So for the moment here, what we're saying is um, we don't have a recommendation around speed goals for this year in 2020, but uh, Steve did a really nice job here of uh, adding some additional language to saying, you know, we've seen as a result of COVID-19, we've seen an increase in demand in broadband. And obviously there's a lot of questions come up around equity and those, all those types of things. Uh, and that the fact that also uh, not only, I mean, obviously the speed itself is important um, and that that needs to be reevaluated whether, you know, 100 megabits per second is adequate going forward. But at the same time, upload speeds are just as important, if not more important, especially around education and things like that, right? So one of the things we will ought to do, we ought to do as a, 
uh, task force is in, in, is in 2021 is really evaluate what does it take to be symmetrical, uh, cost associated around it, uh, effort around that, and also reevaluate whether we need to take a look at the speed goals beyond uh, what's there for 2026. Um, and obviously in the previous document, we also said, you know, if, if there's any, and the previous part in the earlier part in the document, we said, you know, any new implementations need to have, uh, you know, we should strive for that 2026 goal. So that's already in place. So now really is, is, is an effort on us to be able to go evaluate and investigate this. So um, you can read there. I mean, hopefully you got a chance to read it. Um, highlighted in green is the um, is the, is the, the sharper statement that Steve was able to make here. So I thought he did a nice job. Questions, comments on this section? Paul? Paul, I'm not sure if you're speaking or I, I thought you had your hand up, but maybe I, I missed Sorry, it. sorry about that. Um, Maybe I'm showing my age here, and it might be a small thing, forgive me, but going to the legislature asking them for $120 million and, and the possibility of a speeding uh, uh, change down the road, uh, you know, I get the whole video producers, businesses, education in the era of pandemic. I'm not sure we want to go to stakeholders and say we need a speed change for gaming. Um, maybe we could put something like game... <clears throat> yeah, you know, I have a picture of a teenage kid, you know, online, you know, you know, gaming. Let's let's do. That being said, there's a lot of components to the gaming industry, which we could maybe do that, or film production, which I know is very uh, uh, key to all of this as well. Maybe just a little tweak there. I just, I don't want some legislators because I guarantee you that would come out, and I just, I'm a little sensitive to that and. Full disclosure, we're selling Crunchyroll, which is very involved in, in gaming, to Sony, so I can say that freely with, uh, without any policy reservations. <laughs> That's a good call. That's a good call, Paul, and I, you're, you're right. Some will, will hang on there, so yep. let's make let's make those adjustments, yes. Mark Johnson? Is... Is it intentional if I read the green highlighted part, that sounds like a recommendation, even though we're saying we're going to reevaluate it. Am I reading that right or is there a is there something I'm I'm missing? Uh, yeah, that looks like it's uh that that still looks like it's a, a recommend I agree that I was a little concerned by that too, because we're not recommending it. Uh, I think we're, we're definitely talking about, you know, next year looking at the speed based on hopefully increased investment and everything, but I would read this as a policy recommendation. Yeah, no, so, no I, th I think this is a, a cut and paste. We'll, we'll modify it. The idea was this is one of the things we're going to um, investigate. Okay. Bernadine? Thanks, Patty. So, um, in the, again, I think we have an opportunity to really strengthen um, understanding how broadband is an enabler for economic development. In that, and I'd like to suggest this change in the first sentence under speed goal reassessment, the one that starts out Minnesota's broadband speed goals, should be reviewed next year to ensure the goals remain appropriate to pursue with public funds in the broadband grant program and that goals. Um, uh, and ensure that, and what I want is, is, so the point is not that, that, that goals meet demand, we want to ensure that goals, um, we want to ensure that broadband is a help and not a hindrance to equitable economic development and quality of life. So we're not just, we don't need to, goals to meet the demand, but to ensure that broadband is a help and not a hindrance. I think that's you know, we're not just like good enough, but we want to ensure that broadband is an is an enabler for economic development. I think, and I could offer some my language here if you like, but I think that's a chance for us to make that point. 
I also really feel that we, this is an opportunity for us to, there's no reference in here to the letter that we got from the Minnesota mayors together. We had, I don't remember how many in the end, but almost, you know, a dozen or so mayors from across the state addressed us, sent us a letter and called out for the need for speed. I think we should um, reference that letter uh, somehow in here and maybe, maybe include that as an appendix, but at least reference that we did hear from mayors across the state about the need for greater speed. Um, and so, you know, we, we say here that, you know, we already know that we, that the, the, the pandemic has shown, we say here that 100 by, uh, 25 by three is not good enough. And then we say, we're going to study it more. So I, I, I just, um, continue to think that, um, we have a lot of good evidence that we need ambitious goals, but I, I will, I uh, bow of course to the task force. What I'd like to see here is reference to the mayor's letter included okay um i think i got your language on the first part so we can we'll make that adjustment uh you can review it to see if we got it if we got it right uh and then yeah i don't have an issue including the that in the appendix and making a reference to it but um paul you had a comment yeah because i think we've always included any type of letter in the report uh at the, at the back so i think that would be appropriate Okay. Do that. Hi, Yvonne. Hi. Just perhaps we might um, work into this section something about Launch Minnesota. Um, one of the primary goals of Launch Minnesota is to make Minnesota a leader in innovation across the country. And a big part of that has been discussion about uh, Greater Minnesota and the importance of broadband for entrepreneurs in rural areas to be able to succeed. Um, so that might be something to add in there. I'm active with Launch Minnesota as well. Okay. Uh, would you mind drafting something up, Yvonne, and then sending it to Steve Fensky? You bet. Okay. I think just Steve just joined, is that right? I did. Thank you for joining. Okay, and uh, one comment just to you, uh, Bernadine, um, what I would say is uh, I, I think we can, the, the speed goals themselves, I'm not so sure that we shouldn't even go higher than under megabits per second download. Um, so I think that's the discussion we, we can have next year. The other piece to look into is the, is the cost of symmetrical. So we'd love to hear more from experts on what it would take to get to symmetrical and is what the, I mean, if it's like minimal cost to get to symmetrical, why not do that? But if it's a drastic cost, then um, that's something to reassess as well. So uh, part of the discussion was let's, let's kind of get, make sure that we have all our pieces right and then we can make the right recommendations for the future, so. Okay. Um, so we'll change the language in the first paragraph, uh, and I think I have that down, and I'll, 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 I'll give that to Steve. Uh, and then um, we will make a reference to the Minnesota mayor, and then Yvonne, you're going to uh, put maybe draft something together around launch Minnesota and the greater Minnesota and send that to Steve as well. But those are the things I have for this section. Okay. Oh, and then we need to take a look at the one, there's language in there around the, the green part around, make, make sure that we're gonna investigate, not, a, not, not a, um, I'll make a recommendation. Any other questions or comments? I do see some comments coming in from uh, other folks not on the task force. I will get to you. Let's let's get through the document with the task force, and then I'll come back and we'll we, we'll take a look at every single uh, comment in here. So, um, just just a FYI from a procedure standpoint. Okay, moving on to the funding for Office of Broadband Development. 
So uh, this was the idea that, you know, to, our recommendation is to fund the Office of Broadband um, Development at $700,000 for the biennium. Uh, I believe that was 500000 before, so there's an increase to $700,000 here. Um, and then you can read that. I mean, the rest of it is supporting information around that. So uh, any questions and comments, if any, as, as folks have read through this one? Seeing any, you know, oh, there it is. Mark Johnson. Um, purely a grammatical or reading issue in the paragraph under planned and unplanned changes. Um, it talks about in the second sentence uh, the general fund which supports a full time employees. It, it, that's should probably be a number there, or that supports full time without the A. It's just a grammatical thing. Yeah. Seeing any other questions or comments? We'll move on to the next section. Okay, so this one is around the digital inclusion piece. So again, this is uh, the um, uh, recommendation for to create uh, an operating annual fund for the Office of Broadband Development of uh, in the a million and a half dollars to promote to promote the adoption and use of. Um, uh, broadband uh, capabilities and uh, address, you know, uh, digital in in inequalities, inequities that exist today. Um, the, the the areas would be around digital literacy for about five hundred thousand uh, dollars, low income broadband access, um, another five hundred thousand dollars there, and then small business digital fluency of five hundred thousand dollars there. So, um, I think we had talked about this last time, but obviously we cleaned up the language and made it this section within the document. Um, as you've read through this, any um, questions, comments, concerns on this piece? Okay. Not seeing any. Move on. All right. Um, then we get to the barrier section. Um, obviously, there's a lot of information here, uh, a lot of a lot of good background, I think, for for folks to read through. Um, these are also be the areas where we will, as you can see, when I talked about kind of uh, putting certain pieces of uh, examples from counties. I mean, the, we actually did one here. Uh, we took one of the counties and, and brought the example that was Rock County in this in specific instance. Um, there is a recommendation around easements here. Um, so we had some discussion here and we probably need to have some conversation. So recommendation reads now, the Minnesota Broadband Task Force along with the Office of Broadband Development encourages the engagement of state agencies to develop a strategy that will improve communications between the agencies and private internet service providers eliminate or minimize cable cuts or disruption and who will also consider a plan to connect the more challenging rural locations of Minnesota to assure Minnesota is a truly a connected state. Um, so I think when we had the discussion, um, maybe Brian, you have a, you have a comment, uh, I'll let you ask the question, it might be the same one, but then I'll, I'll, I'll follow up. Well, I didn't mean to cut you off, Teddy, I was just going to comment that we we did have the presentation from uh, from Dan and uh, and I think uh, Tony also had some comments. I think just even a generic statement uh, about maybe uh, potential opportunities and partnerships with electric co-ops on easements. Let, let's not get into the detail, but I, I think that would allow the cable companies, the electric co-ops, an opportunity to further explore partnerships and, and working relationships. Because I, I think that the takeaway that uh, that I thought was important there, and obviously I have a conflict of interest representing the electric co-ops, but 
for others, there is an opportunity out there with the uh, the fiber the electric co-ops are putting in the ground to partnership. So I'll just add that, and I don't have any specific context, but uh, was just hoping it could be identified in the document. Okay. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, so around that, could you draft, and I don't want to have the conflict of interest here, but could you draft something and then send it to Cassie, and then she can review with the groups to see how... They might add it into the section. Would that be okay, Brian? Yeah, that'd be fine. And that way, uh, again, I, I'm just looking for something very generic. Uh, and maybe it's just including cooperatives along with private uh, uh, internet service providers in that paragraph. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure we get it right. Um, Steve Fenske, I have a question. Uh, I know when we looked at this, when this recommendation specifically, we thought it needed to be a little bit more um, directive versus just kind of create developing a strategy. Um, forget how our conversation was, but because we said maybe this is already in the statute and maybe we're we need to be a little bit more precise about it. Do you remember the conversation we had? Yeah, well, we read it. Uh, several of us read it and kind of said, I don't really know what this means. It's kind of like saying we encourage a plan, but it doesn't talk about what the plan is. Um, and reading at first, I didn't understand that was about easements at all. So if there's something people want to pull out of what's in the statute, we could try and do that, but I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if we have enough time as a group here to flesh that out, given kind of if we're, if we're trying to get this thing on. Mark, you have a comment? Maybe it's specific around to this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, oh, and I talked with Dave Wolf, who wasn't able to be with us today um, at the meeting, because it kind of came out of things that he did, that he put together for our group. Um, and what we talked about as a possibility, I'll throw this out and see what people think, see if anything sticks. Um, we said it's, we understand now that that's part, that that's sort of part in the statute of what the Office of Broadband Development is supposed to be doing. Um, and so perhaps this is more part of the introductory statements or the, the content around what I think our real recommendations are, are the two pieces having to do with um, uh, first the um, public right of way permitting where we're suggesting a working group be established um, of the stakeholders to talk about that process and the railroading piece where we're asking um, more oversight and asking railroads to be required to locate their facilities and so on. So perhaps those two raise up as actual recommendations and the other piece is sort of supporting context uh, about what the, the Office of Broadband would do. Does that make sense to the group uh, or to you, Teddy, or any, anybody? Uh, that, that makes sense. Um, there's a couple comments. Let's go through those and we'll, we'll kind of summarize. So, but that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yvonne? Um, it's similar to what Mark was just saying. I was just suggesting that we clarify the language in that paragraph to simply say something along the lines of reducing disruption, looking for efficiencies and opportunities for collaboration, you know, and then that would open up the door to the things that are in the paragraphs that come out. Okay. Good, good call. Uh, Bernadine? Thank you, Mark. I think that makes a lot of sense, um, and that probably is the real recommendation that the the nub of it in here. And I took a look at the um, chart or the language on the deed website for our group, the task force, and it, the language there actually charges us with developing a strategy. Uh, so I, I think uh, the language there says that we are that we're going to advise, uh, including strategies for successfully achieving our goals. So. Um, I, I don't think it would be appropriate us for to make a recommendation to call on a group to develop a strategy since that's what we're supposed to be doing here. So I, I, I but I, I, I really um, welcome your suggestion that we focus in on those um, right away permitting as the as the recommendations um, that uh, we want to bring forward. Thanks. Steve Fenske? Yeah, if um I prefer if we if we want to take these things, take them head on, and as you're saying, um, the generic language 
is going to mean something different to everybody. So if we want to address easements, let's address easements, whether that's you know before this goes out or after. Um, if it's permitting, that's you know another issue, and and I think there's going to be differences of opinion on, on some of those things. So, um, but I, the generic statement I don't think gives direction to anybody. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like, um, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, just, just one more thing. I mean, given, uh, given what Steve said, I, that, that title easements might actually be more appropriately permitting given the two potential recommendations that we have coming out of there. I'm just saying that. Okay. So I think on this piece, I think we've, um, Mark, maybe with the team and Cassie, you guys could uh, rework a little bit here. I mean, I don't think there's a lot. I mean, it's just more clarification than anything else, right? Um, we can make those adjustments, and I think we, we should be in a good spot here with some uh, more precise and directive recommendations. And do uh, some questions, comments out from others. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next section, this was a technology part. Um, there wasn't any recommendations coming out of here, but there's a, a lot of good information for those interested, uh, whoever's reading it, around the various technologies available today. Um, so there's you know discussions on cable, DSL, fiber, satellite, TV white space, etc. Uh, a lot of these are um, based on a lot of the presentations we received this year. Um, so that is the the last part of the document, we put it here because it's it's good for informational, but um, obviously since there's no recommendation, um, uh, it, it was kind of put here to the to the back of the uh, of, of our um, of our report. So that's the end of the document, kind of from the uh, before we get into the appendix, and then the appendix obviously has uh, some additional things. Um, what we'll do here is, uh, you know, well, the county examples are all listed here. Like I said earlier, we will take, once the documents get into a more final state, we will take more of the relevant examples from the various counties and include them into the document. Uh, additional testimonials from Minnesotans, that's also down here. And then the, any other maps, uh, we've included them into this area. Again, there's going to be a lot more formatting and cleaning up to make this look uh, a lot nicer, um, but for the moment, we just want to have placeholders for the different parts of the document. Uh, Bernadine, you had a comment? Thanks, Teddy. It is challenging to try to do all this on, with um, keep all our screens open, uh, and I apologize, but I wanted us to, uh, I was looking for the spot where there was language on ARDOF. Could we just have a brief discussion? I, and I was trying to find it in my own copy here. I don't yeah. Could you uh, just have a quick, just pull that up and talk about that for a minute? Yeah. Hey, do you remember where, so. where that was in the document? Yeah. Yeah, I think we're there. Um, right there. There you go. Uh, we know more right now than we did in the last what, meeting. What page, is, what page is that, uh, Steve? Right. Sorry. I, uh, I can't see the page number where I think we're in the I think it's the top of 14, maybe oh, bottom of 13. Okay. Thanks. So we know more now about RDOF than we did in the first uh, earlier drafts here. So we put in the numbers that are uh, that were awarded. We explained a little bit about it, very little bit, and explained that it's a preliminary award. That so it, it's not something we can say this is money in hand, um, and we have to have some caution with it. Yeah. Thanks for that. I was just wondering if the task force might, I'm just might want to consider referencing um, more specific examples of some of the concerns that have been expressed. I know the Office of Broadband Development has received several letters from different community groups and um, stakeholders and advocates about the um, the award and the ability. It's not only about it's about their ability, not just. Uh, are they going to get the funding, but that can they actually deliver? And we talked about this as a task force on what they say they're going to do. So I, I, I would welcome a discussion with the task force if we want to be a little more pointed or explicit 
or specific here to help legislators understand how Minnesotans are responding to the, where we are in the RDOF process now. Because I, I know there have been, the, the federal delegation has been contacted, letters have been sent to the office, and um, I thought we would maybe be derelict to not alert the legislators to that. And talk more about, because it's not just the funding uncertainty, but the concern about the, the uh, winner's ability to deploy. Polly, have a comment? Yeah, I, I, I think before we start throwing sand on the RDOF program, um, you know, I think what we have here is appropriate. You know, this is a federal program. If, if this task force wants to engage in communicating to our federal delegation our concerns, I think we should think about drafting a letter. Um, <clears throat> but to not have you know, LTD broadband, the op, you know, I've, I've kind of read some of these uh, op-eds from groups that, um, you know, that are out there that, you know, um, I, I question their motives, some of them, but, um, and I, you know, I don't have any interest in LTD broadband, but, you know, maybe we ought to wait and hear from LTD broadband as part of a future task force. I mean, they were awarded this, uh, at least awarded uh, you know, the money's not been allocated. Um, let's give them a, an opportunity to defend themselves. They're a Minnesota company. I think it would be irresponsible to start kicking sand on a company that's been awarded, you know, the projects and, and you know, um, just on surface, just to start criticizing without all, without all the information. And I, I don't think we're, we're not sending any message to the legislators that this is going to solve the broadband problem in Minnesota. That, you know, that I think we're very, you know, wise in saying, look, the money's not been committed. It's a 10 year plan. I think, you know, we could see whatever this, but you know, this is a policy, uh, that is circulating. Uh, and I think it's worth noting that we should, we should send that the report to the legislature with the idea, you know, I, I think it helps our case. This is why we need $120 million right now. Because one, we don't want to wait for a 10 year plan that's not even fully funded or kicking the can down the road with, you know, whatever the FCC or Congress might come up with. Um, let's focus on the on the plan at hand. But at the same time, I just don't think it's fair to kind of, you know, disparage a company that, you know, obviously impressed somebody at the FCC to get awarded this. And, you know, there's a lot of fixed wireless you know, this, this broadband grant program is awarded, you know, several uh, fixed wireless projects to Minnesota companies. And, and I think we should, uh, as, a, as a broadband task force, uh, avail ourselves of, of, of learning more about why they succeed. Thanks, Bob. Steve Jensky. Yeah, uh, the, the original draft we had on there listed LTD and um, I didn't think that was appropriate. This is a state report. It represents us. It represents uh, Walz's administration. It goes to the legislature. And right now it's all speculation. And so time will tell if that company or any other can deliver. But I, I don't want to put their name in it. The same as we've had other, other companies whose names have been mentioned and we've removed them. I think we should do the same here. It's anonymized. Anybody who wants to find out certainly can. But I don't think we should be the ones to 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 prove. Right now. Uh, Micah, do we want to mention? And and Diane, you can correct me if I'm not wrong. Didn't we have to have some of the applicants in the current uh, list of broadband provide uh, broadband grant applicants removed? Uh, Areas that LTD could potentially get to, so it does have an impact. And um, you can speak to LTD in the past; they they've been awarded and they didn't deliver and they, uh, on the cap or two. So do a little research on this company and find out: are they really going to do it? And it is going to impact, um, and it already is impacting us. Brandy. Thanks. Thanks for the discussion on our art off group. Um, I appreciate it. And um, I, I wanted to just oh, check that last, the first, uh, moving on to the last paragraph in the section, the one that starts, it should also be noted that 
CAMP2 program is coming to an end in 2020. Correct me if I'm wrong, Steve and others, but hasn't FCC extended CAP2 to 2021? That's my understanding. And so uh, I don't know the date. If, it, if it's a later date, then if you could just give us the reference or whatever and we'll, we'll put it in 2021. Did you have your hand up again, or was that from earlier? That's still from earlier. Oh, never mind. I'll fix that. Steve Georgie? Steve, you're on mute still. Looking at the second paragraph on page 12, um, CAF 2, we estimate, uh, so the third sentence, in addition, federal CARES Act funding is also coming into Minnesota, part of which is being spent on broadband access. Um, I don't know where that happened or when it happened. The governor didn't allocate any funding for out of the CARES Act that we got in 2020 for broadband. And, uh, and then it references um, a bipartisan proposal, but it certainly hasn't been passed. So I'm a little bit concerned about the implications that, um, you know, help is on the way. When the last time we had 2.1 billion, the governor didn't allocate anything specifically for broadband. Defense, do you have a comment on that one? Sure. So I can, uh, if we don't want to mention the CARES Act because that's speculation, we can remove the reference to CARES Act. I don't have preference. Any comments from anyone else on this? Bernadine? Thanks. The opportunity might be here to Steve's point to include examples from uh, how other states have used their CARES Act money. Um, I would, and, and the second thing is that um, on the, that we did um, assemble as many examples as we could across Minnesota of counties using their CARES Act money, you know, that they received from the state to do some broadband infrastructure. I don't know, there's a dozen or so examples um, that we, we could, provide if we wanted to illustrate and now the constraint there as we know was that the timeline and so it's harder to get infrastructure done by the end of the year but some counties were able to do that so if we did want to talk about how Steve's absolutely right that the governor chose not to do anything at the state level and other states have so in anticipation of additional funding if we wanted to show examples to the governor and the legislature of how other states have used their federal resources, this would be an opportunity to do that. I'd be happy to work with others to draft some examples of what we know about what's going on in other states. One and two, if we wanted to include in here examples of how counties use their CARES Act dollars that they got from the state on broadband infrastructure, we have that information too that was assembled based on you know press reports across the state. Anne's on the line and she could say more detail about how many there were, about a dozen I think. Now, the, the one thing, I, and I'm, I'm, it makes sense if you want to reword it here, but you just got to remember what the governor said when he was on the call last time, right? We elected, not, not to, we elected to push the dollars to the local counties and to local government uh, um, entities to be able to decide how to best use those CARES dollars, right? That, that, that was the statement he made. Now we can take it whichever way we want to. So there's the... State itself said we didn't take the dollars and said we're going to do this for broadband. It was more like, yeah, if the county feels like that's what's most important at the moment in time, they can choose to do that. So we can update the language, but I think we'll have to include something around that uh, there. Teddy, a question. Is there any reason to mention the past CARES Act situation? 
I I would not write anything unless the, the group is something being included. I don't see a purpose in mentioning the past CARES Act uh, situation. That's a good call. That's a good question. Bernadine? Yes, you know, I think the point would be, you know, we, if we do anticipate there'll be additional federal funding like this, for the state to see how other states use their federal dollars to advance their broadband purposes, right? I mean, we made a set of choices here in Minnesota and other states, so that would be the only reason, I think, to do it, is that it might inform the future choices before the governor and legislature. And okay. we could include okay. examples of how... At the county level, I think you know Ann points out that it was in the in the chat, Anna, that it was spent on broadband. It was uh, by counties, but they had to do it within you know by the by December 30th, and so it really limited. You didn't you had to have a shovel ready project to build by then. But we could list so those all, examples. Yeah, all that can be couched in terms of if there's new federal new federal cares money or similar, it can be used as these states did. Okay. Mark Johnson. And I, I'll, I'm just going to lend some support to that idea. Um, the fact that, I mean, what we're doing in this whole report is we're really, we're trying to look forward and say, here's what we need to continue to move forward and meet our goals. If we look back and say, you know, this money was spent this way and we start to question it and we start to get in the weeds on it, um, that can get problematic. But if we do as has just been suggested, use it to look forward and say, this money could be used in these ways. And here's some examples of how that was done. I think that that's appropriate in my mind. Uh, Steve Georgie. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree on, on that concept. I just want to go back to the RDOF. Um, and I'm curious or questioning, and I, and I don't know if Angie's on the call, um, but we had a meeting the other day and Angie was able to speak to it. Um, shouldn't there be um, a statement in here that the RDOF awards can have a significant impact on the border-to-border uh, -border grant applications and, and awards? Because right now, um, I think the the Office of Broadband is going through some very trying times on what they do with current grant applications that have RDOF census blocks uh, recently awarded in them. And I know that's complicated, but I'm just wondering, you know, going into 2021, if everything stands with the RDOF award, is that going to significantly limit the border to border grant program? If maybe Angie's on or Diane can. And the reason I bring that up is I don't think I don't think ninety percent of your legislators understand, you know, that connection. Angie or Diane, any comments? Uh, Angie here. Um, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Teddy. Um, I, I appreciate the conversation. You know the. The only comment I'll make for the group today is that we're in the middle of this open grant round, so it really wouldn't be appropriate for me to go into further discussion today, but I appreciate um, the, the feedback and input that folks have been sharing with our office. Thank you. Uh, Brian? Uh, maybe just to follow up on Steve's comment, uh, I think the uh, Minnesota Broadband Coalition even had a, a letter going out recommending that the RDOF awards be excluded uh, from the border to border broadband grant program until they were fully vetted. So I don't know if that's the language, Steve, that you were kind of looking at to be more specific. Well, I'm kind of looking at next year more so than the 2020 grant applications and awards. So. Uh, again, it's it's should we include just that cautionary statement in there so legislators have a better understanding? Um, and again, I I can't speak for the Office of Broadband, but 
I think, again, there's uncertainty that it may be a, a stumbling block. So, that's... Bernadine? I'd like to speak in support of Brian's recommendation, Brian. I think that makes a lot of sense, um, and and would be would be helpful. Um, maybe you could restate it for the group. I've only had one cup of coffee, Bernadine, so I'll have to uh, see if I can remember what I said. But I was implying more along the line of uh, until the Ardoff uh, funds have been fully vetted that the Office of Broadband Development uh, uh, not consider those areas served uh, to be ineligible for uh, for local provider funding, something along that line. Yeah, I support that, and I'd like us to see if we can get agreement on the task force to support that. Thank you, Brian. Any opposition to the comments there? Um, Steve Fenske, do you have a good handle of the request there? Uh, I think so. They don't want the implications of RDOF providers to impact the border to border program. Um, as I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure if we get to make that choice. The law says what it says, and OBD gets to interpret it as the agency. So uh, I'll, I'll put in, I guess, as a a um, a request or as a um, is this a recommendation level? What are, what level are we saying this at? I thought it would be more of a statement here, Steve, than more so than a recommendation, right? Okay. Can Brian or somebody give me a first draft of exactly what you mean? I'll do what I can, but I can see in the chat box that. We got to walk a pretty fine line here, and I, I think the recommendation is uh, is a good suggestion, Teddy. Okay. Okay, and then on the uh, the CARES Act piece for future looking forward, um, Steve Fenske, do you do you feel like you have enough there, or do you need someone to send you something? Uh, I'm happy to have examples of other states. So uh, Bernadine and any who have examples, let me know and I'll put something in that's forward-looking based on those examples. Okay. Before I go to the chat and look at everything else that's there, I haven't actually peeked there yet. Uh, any other Questions, comments on the overall document from the task force? Okay, I'm not seeing any, so I'm going to go to the comments now. I apologize if some things are repetitive here, but I'm just starting from the start here. Uh, in second paragraph on page 14. Yep, we'll, we will get that one fixed. Um, Anna Boroff, you had a question around, is the highlighted green portion, that was around the speed goals, I believe, and I think we're going to update that language to, um, to say more investigation around uh, future goals, so we'll make those adjustments there. Um, Nathan Zacharias, is that next year, the 2020 legislative session or the 22 legislative session? Uh, Nathan, if you're on, maybe come on mute. And which, where, where part of the document were you asking that about? Maybe Nathan's not on anymore. But uh, next year to me would be the 2021 legislative session, unless we're talking about uh, we're going to do some investigations and doing more recommendations. That would be next year's, and like we're going to do it in 2021 to make a recommendation for the 2022 legislative session. Sorry, Teddy, my my mic was on the wrong input setting. Um, the the question was uh, exactly what you referred to um, for the symmetrical speed goals. Um, was that recommendation to the 21 legislative session or for the 2022? I think you cleared that up. You guys will be tackling that next year and then recommending the following year, perhaps? Am I getting that right? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Okay. Ann, 
then Tracy had a question around the easement recommendation make a better additional recommendation. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, I think uh, Mark Johnson and team, we're going to work with Cassie, review that piece of it, and then we'll see how it shapes up in the document. And to your point, we'll see where, where it best fits once it uh, that's finalized. Anna Boroff, he, had, he said, I have no idea what the section means, the presentation then with the cuts. I'm, I'm assuming it's around the, was this around the easements piece? I'm not sure if we resolved that or not. Anna, if you, if you have any comments, please come off mute and you can let us know. Jim Wycombe. Uh, if you had more spelling right away, it should be right away. Yep, we'll make that adjustment. I'm just reading through the comments. These are more comments than anything else. Thank you for responding. Okay, I think I've handled most things because most things are just more uh, statements or comments. Um, any questions or comments from anyone outside of the task force at this point, at this moment? You, you feel free to come off mute and make a statement. Hey, Teddy, real quick, in your letter, uh, I, I note we have Myron Franz as the commissioner still. I, I don't know if that was you know, because he was the commissioner at the time of the task force formation, but um, I thought he had changed jobs or had left the administration. Yeah, no, I, I need to make that change. Okay. That That's all I have. Thank yeah. you. Uh, yep. Can I ask a question? Yep. I guess I have a lot of sort of comments throughout the report. Is there a way that we could submit sort of all of those comments at once? Yeah, you can do that. So we can submit, uh, put all the comments or statements or whatnot together. And then uh, you can send it to myself um, um, or the rest of the task force up to you. And we'll certainly take into account and, and bring it back to, to this group. Okay, thank you. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the changes I have written down. Now it may not be comprehensive, Others may have written down other things, but um, but I'll quickly run through it, and then we can talk about what we're going to do next. So um, there was a section when we had the uh, deployment of the dollars over the years to add, to include households served by year. Um, Steve uh, Georgie made that comment, so we'll make sure we add that into the table. Um, there was a bullet, second bullet on page 10 that didn't read well, so we got to make sure we to make adjustments to that. Um, Bernadine, on the, um, there's a footnote that we need to put in the table where we made the calculations for the, um, you know, kind of the dollars required, and then there was two bullets under that. Um, you were going to make some edits and adjustments to that, and then send that over to Steve Fenske to be included into the document. Also, the opening statement for the mapping one, uh, you also made a good comment there that, you, you know, she needs to be a little bit more ex explanatory. You are going to make uh, some changes there. You can send that over to Cassie. Um, there was a language around gaming, which we probably need to edit that and maybe even remove that altogether. Um, there was a green section in the speed goals around uh, uh, the, what we're going to investigate. So we're going to clarify that and make sure we have good language around that piece of it. Um, at the opening of the, uh, I think the speed goals one, we want to say something around ensure that broadband is an enabler to economic development, not a hindrance, uh, versus kind of we just had a demand in, in Minnesota, so we'll make adjustments there. Uh, we also want to make sure we reference the letter from the Minnesota mayors, so we will make that reference and then also include the letter in the appendix. Um, in that section, we should also have something around Launch Minnesota uh, in Greater Minnesota. Yvonne, you were going to make some uh, maybe a paragraph or a statement around that and send that over to Steve Fenske so we can include it in the document. Um, there's some language around planned and unplanned changes. We need to clean up some language there. Uh, there's a section in barriers, of, say, with a right of ways. I mean, we should say right of way instead, so we need to clean that up. Um, 
around CAF funding, and I know I'm a little over, but it's just kind of the order in which I capture these comments, but around CAF funding, uh, we want to say something around it's going to be extended to 2021, because right now it just says 2020. Uh, we want to make sure we have forward statements around the CARES Act and how that could be used and examples from other states. So Steve Fenske probably going to work with Bernadine on figuring out how we, that we make that statement. And then there was a statement around RDOF, where we want to make a statement, not a recommendation. But Brian, you will work with Steve, and then we'll see how we can uh, put that language into the document in, a, in that specific section. So those are all the things I captured. All right, Johnson? Uh, I think we're also working on that piece with the easements and moving those other two points up as recommendations instead of the sort of uh, broad statement that we have now. Is that right? Yes, yeah, that's right. That. Right. That's right. I was caught up in the conversation there. I didn't write it down. Yes, <laughs> that one too. Okay. One down. Okay. So, hopefully, we captured everything. So, here are the next steps. So, various the the, the writers will work on the various sections to make these updates. Um, probably sooner than later, we will republish the documents and say, here's the next version. Um, throughout that process, you probably some, you see some cleanups around uh, the table of contents, the executive summary, uh, some of the formatting and all those things. So you should see this document get tighter and tighter. Um, what I will do also when we publish the next day, say that the document is ready for the next review, um, we'll also make sure that if you have comments in specific sections, that will have the writer associated with that section, right? So that way you can send your comments to that individual. And if we, you know, especially around uh, adjust languages, you know, or uh, it needs to be written differently, needs to be clarified, there's some misspelling, anything like that around around that, we can, uh, those writers can make those adjustments so you know who to send it to. Um, and then obviously, um, uh, if you also have something that more needs to be discussed with the larger group, you can again send it to the writer, they can escalate it up. And then, you know, if we need to have another session where we really have some big outstanding items that we need to have discussions with, we can look into that. Or we might be able to even handle it by email if it's something smaller, um, but we think it's more appropriate to be handled that way. Um, but hopefully we'll go through this, and then um, what we'll do is um, uh, once we kind of finish with that, and let's say we're in a spot where we're pretty much in alignment with the document, um, I will ask for approval by, by email to say, are you, are you in support of this document or this report as it stands right now? Um, if I get approval that way, then we'll kind of pass it in that, in that fashion, and then we'll also make sure that we collect all the signatures from all the participants um, into uh, on the task force. So that'll be our next steps. Um, and hopefully I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, we seem to be, and I was only 12 days left in the year, two holidays in between, but uh, we're in a good spot where we can, we can start to get this wrapped up and actually have it. The goal is really to have it into the governor's hands and the legislature hand for they start even thinking about the legislative session, right? So as they kind of get into that, they, they have these things in hand and obviously a, a lot more discussions and, 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 and meetings that could happen here in, in the January timeframe, but at least we have our ask uh, pretty tightened up here. Um, that, that's, the, that's the goal. Teddy, I put a, this is Diane, I put a comment in the chat box and um, Steve Fenske, who's a lawyer, agreed. You can't vote by email as a public body. Okay, so you're saying we need to get folks back together? Well, Steve can maybe have some input here if, if you want to vote on the report as it is today. I think you could do that at the meeting and then folks can review continuing drafts of it. And if, if there are significant changes, it would need 
to have a vote at a meeting. Otherwise, um, you might be able to just go based on today's vote. Um, Steve might have some input on that. Sure. If we just can't do any business uh, among a quorum of our members outside of the public's view based on the open meeting law. So if you want to vote on it, you got to do it at a meeting like this. Okay. There's alternatives. You could just have everybody vote with the understanding that we have today. Uh, we'll put the draft together. It'll go out on whatever date. And unless there's a, you know, unless there's a call for a meeting, and then in which case you could have a meeting to come back and we'll talk about it. Paul, do you have a comment? Yeah, I, I think we've done something uh, like this in previous reports where, you know, subject to, you know, some changes that, you know, we've reviewed. We kind of been, you know, just vote to approve the report. Um, so, you know, in, in the essence of time, maybe that might be the the best course of action. You know, I think we're only talking about some tweaks and things of that nature. But, you know, the policy recommendations are there. I think we've got consensus on that. Um, I think we have consensus on the document as a whole. So, I mean, I'd be certainly comfortable, you know, recommending the adoption of the report just subject to you know, whatever little minor tweaks that need to be made for editorial purpose. Got it. Um, and that's, that's a good, uh, I like that, Paul. Now the question is, is if somebody has any heartburns, what's the methodology to, do they kind of report it back up and Steve, I'm asking Steve and, and Diane, do they report it back to me and then we make a call on whether we need to have a, another meeting with folks? Is that how the process works? Yeah, if if, uh, if we vote today to accept the draft with the changes you described and, and give a date that it would go out, uh, everybody would have a chance to look at it. And then if somebody has a objection or concern, they could bring it to you and ask for a meeting. And it would probably be, you know, in that case, a good idea to call the meeting. Got it. Okay. So... Let's, let's do that then. So let's uh, we'll ask for a vote here to see if everybody agrees. Um, subject to the changes that we just discussed today, the final draft of the document, um, um, I'm going to put it I'm kind of stake in the ground here, will go out on the 23rd of December um, and will be available for review at that point to make sure everybody's okay with it. Um, if there's any heartburn or things that don't look right other than you know minor tweaks and all those kind of things that do require us to get back together um, if I please send those to me and then if we do see those then we will need to have another meeting and that will either be the week of December 28th or will be the week of January 4th um, so that's as it stands right now and hopefully everybody's okay with that approach okay so uh, with that, maybe I'll make a mo somebody make a motion to see if we want to approve the document as it stands now with subject to the changes we discussed today. This is Steve Fenske. I'll make the motion to approve the document we have today with the changes you described. Steve has made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. All seconding it. All in favor, of the, all in those of the task force in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Paul or Steve Fensky, don't you think that has to be a roll call vote? Probably it has, since we're all signed up. It does under the, uh, the remote meeting rules here, so why don't we do a roll call? <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's good. So many laws need to be changed. In well, no, no, yeah, exactly. The remote <laughs> virtual <laughs> Change at one point. I'm like, does a hand does a hand up even count in the team? <laughs> at least there's not 134 of us. That's true. That's true. That would be a lot harder. Okay, Diane, do you want to go through and right. ask sure. members of the task force? All right. On the pending motion, um, say you support yes or no. If you don't, Teddy Bacelli. Yes. Yvonne Caravo. Yes. Nolan Cowden. Did we lose Nolan? Uh, Dale Cook. Scott. Here. 
that a yes? Yes. Okay, thanks, sir. Hear me? Steve Fenske. I, I can, yes. oh, no, Nolan, yes. Nolan, are you a yes or no? Yes. Okay, thanks. I'm a yes. Uh, Steve, okay. Steve Fenske? Yes. Steve Georgie? Yes. Jason Hollanday, I think he may have left. Mark yes. Johnson? Yes. Bernadine Joslin? Yes. Brian Crambier? Yes. Jason, uh, Micah Myers? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Teresa Sunday, have you joined us yet? Jim Wycombe? Yes. Paul Wirt? Yes. And Dave Wolf, I don't think is on, but um, I'll give him an opportunity. Dave. Dale Wolf? Dave Wolf? All right. Um, so Jason Hollanday, Teresa Sunday, and Dave Wolf um, were not. Um, I don't think they're on the call right now. Otherwise, unanimous. Okay. Do we. Do we have a chance to follow up with them? Again, I'm not surprised. I should ask now every time. No. No, they just have to be here. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. I think we've, we've made good, good progress. Um, and Cassie, I think you can stop sharing the document now. Um, like I said, we'll make some adjustments, uh, all the adjustments that we just talked about today. Um, several of you are going to be involved in, in doing this. so. Um, that's great. I think we've uh, made some really, really good progress. And again, I do want to thank the writers again for spending the time to, to do this uh, and, and, and really spending the time to put this together. I mean, that was, that was a lot of work and a lot of discussions. And, and I know for some of them, it was, it was late nights as well. So uh, in addition to everything else that they've got going on. Um, Bernadine, you had a comment before I Yeah, close. thanks, Teddy. I know it's hard for you to keep track of the chat box. Before we close, could we just address uh, the question in the chat box? Is there a copy of the report in its current state available to the public? In its current state before we make any adjustments? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, the, the, the in-process version, yes. Um, I don't know what the procedure is around that. Is that... Again, I'll have to defer back to Diane or Steve to help me with, is that something we can make available or should make available? Yes, should make available. Yeah, yeah, normally, yeah normally when we meet in person, we just have to make one paper copy available to the public. So I'm not, if, if Steve Fensky, I mean, I can either check with our counsel or Steve Fensky is saying we need to post it. Um, Okay. We can post we, it on we, the we, yeah, of the we website. Can take, we can take a copy of the same one that, um, that before we started today, right, and then post it along with the minutes and the, the approved minutes for the day. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can put a PDF copy of the draft report. Uh, Perhaps the watermark or something indicating that it's a draft. Yeah, we need that. Yeah. yeah. Policy, you had your hand up and, and you have a comment. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I, you know, Bernadine and I are the only uh, carryovers from previous task forces. I just want to say uh, mm -hmm. congratulations to you and, and the task force. You know, this is always an interesting time, this time of year, trying to, you know, reach a consensus document. I'm always proud, you know, that we can we can come together and reach that. I think this document stands on its own, and particularly in light of the pandemic and everything we've done, uh, I think it'll be very exciting to go to the legislature next year and argue for these dollars and, you know, let's get this problem solved for a lot of Minnesotans. So congratulations to you and, and the task force members. Uh, uh, thanks to all of you. I mean, all the work was done with the task force members as well as the writer. So that's where all the credit goes. Thank you. Um, Ann Tracy, did you have a comment? You had your hand up. Yes, I've usually had a copy that I've been able to put on the Blend and on Broadband blog. If Diane can get me one in the next couple hours, that's great. Otherwise, I can use what I have because that's really kind of a open meeting kind of a thing. Yep. Thank 
Thanks, Anne. Thank you. Okay, one last thing I wanted to do. So for those on the task force, one of the things we can do is take a picture, right? <laughs> because we can't get together. Uh, but we'd want to include that in the appendix to even show that we had the meeting virtually. So for those on the task force, if you could turn your video on, if you're able to do so, and for those who are not, obviously, please turn off the video, and then I'm going to do a screenshot as best I can of, of what we have here, and we'll probably need to do two of those. So uh, I'll ask those there to, to do this. Let's see. Steve, Georgie, Paul, Yvonne, Mark Johnson, Nolan, Bernadine. Anybody else? Everybody got their video turned on? Micah, do you have yours on? Yeah, my video's on. Okay, yep, there it goes. All right, give me one second. I don't know if it's better or worse than a, doing a portrait. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, I appreciate all the effort to get here. Uh, we have a couple more things to you know, kind of uh, finish up here, but I think we'll be in good shape and uh, we'll be in a good spot to be able to take this to the governor, and work with his office, or could uh, also take it to the legislature. We have a number of several folks we'll send this to. Um, <laughs> Paul, I see the, the dog there. That's awesome. Um, and, uh, and, and obviously we'll, um, we'll get this out and then we'll also start working on uh, schedules for next year to have our meetings. And I think there's a few things we want to follow up um, on and I think we've got some, some great things to do. And one thing I hope to do is also get together next year. I mean, it may not be at the first part of the year, but hopefully towards the middle of the year, uh, we might be able to get together and, and, and be able to even celebrate this part on a face to face. So with that, unless there's any other uh, last minute comments or questions, I will uh, bring this meeting to a close and want to tell everyone to have happy holidays. Hopefully get a chance to disconnect in the real sense this time, right? We used to say this at this time of the year, but these days it's like really disconnect from the computer. So, um, and, and enjoy some time with your families and um, we'll see you back in the uh, beginning of the year. <laughs> Let's pick a park and go snowshoeing. Yes, we could do that. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.